What's up guys, as Nathan Reed, I'm gonna be doing another tutorial today. Um, but this is a very special video because it marks the milestone of 500 subs. That's like insane. The fact that 500 individual people like saw one of my videos or two of my videos and was like, I wanna watch all this guy's content and click subscribe. Like it's, it's still a bit surreal to me. So I, I really just wanna thank you guys for 500 subs. Uh, it's a big number. <clears throat> Anyways, getting on with the tutorial. I'm basically just gonna be going over how to do magic bullet looks for free in DaVinci Resolve. So there's a plugin um, by Red Giant called Magic Bullet Looks that a lot of people, uh, a lot of After Effects editors like to use to um, color grade and add just like kind of post effects to their edits. But as usual, there is a free alternative to pretty much every one of those effects in DaVinci Resolve. So that's what I'm gonna be going over today. First off, I'll just show you the clip that I'm using. Uh, this is it. I just picked it because it was like really short. Anyways, getting into the effects. The first effect that people usually think of is called spot exposure. Um, and DaVinci Resolve is called hot spot. So it's basically just like a masked area with the exposure turned up. So basically, once you get the hot spot in here, you can grab the circle and just like make it hella big and then put it like, most people like put it at the top of the frame to kind of like, <clears throat> to kind of imitate like sunlight. You can turn the strength down if you want to or have it up, whatever you want. Um, and then you can fuck with the, the color. So for this example, I'll just do red. Actually, I'll show, I'll show a bunch of different colors. So if I wanted it to be red, I would adjust the blue and green ones and bring the, bring the gain of the blue and green down. So now you got kind of like a, a red, glow at the top of your frame. Um, turn those back up. And then if I wanted it to be like a blue glow, I could turn red and green down. And then if I wanted it to be, uh, let's say like a, like a magenta glow, I would only turn the green down. So these are basically like um, individual levels of each color channel. So that's how that works. Um, I'm gonna leave it like about like that. So yeah, that's hot spot. The next one that a lot of people use is Diffusion. It's called Diffusion and Magic Bullet, but pretty much it's just a glow. It's like just a soft glow. It, it might be like a little different, but like it's pretty much, it's the same overall effect that you're getting. So honestly, all these glows are pretty good. Actually, the one that I usually use is this one right here, the one that has like this little picture on the side. And you can pretty much adjust this to however much glow you want. So the threshold is like which levels is the glow being applied to. So like if you have the threshold pretty high, the glow will only be applied to like the brightest parts of the frame. But if you have the threshold low, the glow will be applied to like everything. You can kind of just adjust this per clip. Like if you have a darker clip, you might want to put the threshold lower. And then the spread is obviously like how far the glow spreads out. HV ratio is like kind of like aspect ratio. I usually just leave that in the middle. And yeah, gain, gamma, all this stuff. These all pretty much just affect brightness. And then you can change the color of the glow. So this is pretty useful. So if you wanted like a blue type of color correction, this this helps with color correction. Because if you want to do like a blue CC, you can make the glow blue. Or like, for example, since I did a red hot spot, I'll, I'll do like kind of like a more orange CC. So like add a bit of like orange reddish tones into it. That looks pretty cool. So that's how, that's how you use glow. It's pretty, pretty easy. Another one that people really like in Magic Bullet is uh, chromatic aberration. And like pretty much any photo video editing software will have chromatic aberration. And also if you don't have Reactor, that is kind of essential. So uh, it's basically like a third party script for DaVinci. And if you don't know how to get it, you can just look up uh, Reactor for DaVinci Resolve. It's really easy to install. Um, but yeah, a couple of the plugins that I'm gonna be using are from Reactor, including this one. So for Chromatic Aberration, there's a couple different ones. I think there's one built into Resolve, but the two that I think are really good are Fast Chroma and the ML Glitch Chromatic Aberration. But I'll just, I'll do this one first. So fast chroma is basically like, fast chroma is a lot easier on your CPU. But it's literally just like a one slider control. So it basically separates all the different um, RGB channels and like kind of adds like a zoom to each one respectively at like a different level. And you can also mess with how it splits up the, the aberration. So like if you wanted to get like a more like rainbow effect with the red and blue splitting, or you could do like a red and green split, which makes it kind of like, I don't know, like 3D glasses, I guess. There's just like different combinations of how you can split the colors up. And that also kind of depends on what CC you want. Like if you want like a, like a greenish purple, like really like hyper pop glitchy type 
effect, green and purple might be the move. But if you want to like more realistic, I would just stick with this red and blue split and you know, like kind of have it like more subtle. So that's one of the chromatic aberrations. And then the other one is the MT glitch chromatic aberration. MT glitch is like one of the reactor effects, but it's like inside of like a, a pack of effects. Um, anyways, this one has a lot more controls because you can change each individual channel's offset as much as you want. And you can put it, you can put this on like, I don't know, like, like a really high value. If you want to get like some weird like frame glitches, I don't know. And then you can also change the aspect ratio of each channel, which I thought was pretty cool. And you can also adjust the blur size of each channel. So I can blur the red, just the red channel, stuff like that. It gives you a lot more control over the effect, but if you just want some like simple chromatic aberration, fast chroma is a lot easier. Another effect that people like to use a lot is like edge softness, or some, some people might describe it as like tilt shift. So yeah, to add um, like the kind of like tilt shift effect, you basically just add, you can add any blur that you want. I'm just gonna do this one. And then you add a circle filter. That If you have this selected, it'll automatically go to it. But if not, then just hook it, hook this up to the blue input of the blur. And then you wanna do invert on the mask and then turn the soft edge up like a bunch. And then and that's about it. Now you got soft edges. It looks hella dreamy. All right, next effect. Magic Bullet looks has a vignette, which a lot of people like to use. And that is like another thing that like every single like software for photo or video has. You just type in vignette. You get this black uh, kind of darker, darker edges that kind of imitate the look of like film. You can turn up the anamorphism. This is kind of like aspect ratio. So if you want to narrow, you can turn that down or up if you want it wider. I'm just gonna leave it in the middle. Um, so the size basically just affects how strong the vignette is. And then the softness is like, if you turn the softness all the way down, that's what it looks like. It's basically like blur. And then you can also change the color of it. So if you want like a glow on the edges, you can do that. I don't know, if you want like a blue vignette, whatever you want. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it black. So yeah, that's that. Um, the second part of what I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna add some motion blur, cause why not? This is just for my personal satisfaction. All right, so I just added some basic effects, um, so it's not like too boring. But uh, here's the here's the clip with with all those effects that we just added. I added like a flicker and like some glitch, but that's about it. All right, so the next part of the video, what I want to talk about is basically color grading because Magic Bull Looks has a lot of color grading capabilities, all of which are possible in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is like mainly used for color grading at like a professional level. So you shouldn't need any third party uh, plugins for color grading. The first method you can use for color grading is um, kind of like more of a creative method that I personally enjoy doing. If you want like more of like an aggressive or like experimental color grade, what you can do is basically like, here, I'm gonna separate this. So this is everything we just did. Going forward, this is what we're gonna do. So what you can do for this method is add a background. It'll automatically merge it. And then set the background to like, I don't know, like blue or red or something really basic. I'll do blue. And then basically you can change, you can change that later, but basically what you do is you go in the merge node right here and just mess around with the different blending modes. So like darken gives everything like an eerie blue feel. Multiply, and some of these might be different depending on what color you have also. So I'm just like scrolling through all the different blending modes. Overlay is kind of dope. That's actually really cool. Like this might also be useful if you wanted to change something from like daytime to nighttime. Again, you might get better results with different blending modes depending on which color you have. So if I had like a lighter color, for example, some of these ones might work better. Difference, this is interesting. It gives you like blue slash yellow. I wonder if I change the color to red. That's interesting. Saturation, this is kind of weird. So yeah. Just experimenting with any of these is like a fun way to color grade. I'm kind of fucking with the soft light. I'm gonna make this more like orangey and then turn the blend down. That looks pretty cool. Kind of like a tint, but it like preserves some of the other colors, which I like. Okay, the rest of the color grading stuff I'm gonna be doing in this tab, which is the color tab of DaVinci Resolve. 
So I'm just gonna go over basics. Let's start with the curves. So here, this is like all the different graphs that you can mess with for your color grading. I'm gonna start with the basic curve. So this basically describes an input versus output of like the luminosity levels of your picture. So if I wanna make the shadows darker, I would take these, th these are like the shadows down here, and I would make them darker like that. Or if I wanted to make the highlights darker, you could take this and bring the highlights down. Maybe like leave the shadows up there and bring the highlights down. You can see those are getting darker. So that's just like a general explanation of how this works. So I kind of want to like increase the contrast a little bit. So I'm going to bring the, the, the shadows down and some of the highlights and midtones up a little bit. That looks pretty, honest. like the, you don't need to do much here. Like a little goes a long way with the, with the levels. And then you can do that and then you can also adjust the levels for each individual RGB channel. <clears throat> if I wanted to take the blue down and make the highlights more yellow, I would, I could do that. You can see how that changes it, um, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. The next thing that I wanna talk about is, and if you, if you kind of hover over these for a second, you can see what the graphs are. So there's hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luminance, luminance versus saturation, saturation versus saturation, and saturation versus luminance. So I'm gonna do hue versus saturation because this one is used a lot. This is very useful for um, color grading because if you kind of have like, I don't know, let's say you have like a clip where the colors are kind of all over the place and you kind of just want to dial in like just a few colors, you like, for example, let's say I only wanted like the red to be saturated. I could put a point, I put a control point there and a control point there and oh, like two here and then just bring down the saturation of everything that's not red okay i'm making it a bit more aggressive and you can start to see how everything that's not within this range is getting completely desaturated and then the next thing that you can look at is hue versus luminance so if you want a certain hue to be darker i could do this this and then take the blues and make the blues darker like that. Actually, it's not really doing anything because there's nothing blue on there. Here, I'll, I'll to, just to, for the purpose of demonstration, I'll do it the opposite. I'll make everything that's red darker. Now you can see all the reds just got brought down, which is like most of the frame. I don't know, let's do it with like yellow. And like, now like all the leaves are dark. It's kind of cool. But that's how that works, basically. All right, next one is luminance versus saturation. So if you want to saturate like I don't know, let's say I wanted to saturate all the mid-tones. I could put a point here and like increase the saturation of that. And then like, if I wanted to, I could make all the highlights desaturated like that. This looks wonky as hell, but you get the idea. If you can see what's going on, kind of each graph basically describes what's on the x-axis, what's on the y-axis. So like luminance is on the x-axis and saturation is on the y-axis. Saturation, saturation versus luminance. You versus here, it's all it's all the same, same concept. Um, and then the final way that you can color grade is um, using these color wheels. And you, there's also different um, tabs for this part. So you could do the primary color wheels, where you have you can control the lift, the gamma, gain, and offset, the color of each of those, as well as temperature. So if you want to make something warmer, you adjust the temperature. If you want to tint. That's where the tint is. Um, color boost. Color boost actually um, might be useful if you're making like just a frag movie, because this is basically the same thing as digital vibrance. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like dry. If I turn the color boost up, that's, that's digital vibrance. Shadows, you can turn the shadows up and down. Same with highlights. I wanted to turn the highlights up a bit. Saturate, overall saturation. Um, hue. So that's basically everything that goes into color grading. And obviously this is like pretty aggressive because I kind of just like put every single effect on it. But um, yeah, that's basically how you get magic bullet looks in DaVinci Resolve um, for free. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I will be posting more videos very soon. Peace.